Hi, I'm Shane with eTorio.com. Today on your 1999 Chevrolet Silverado, I'm going to walk you through how to install the eTorio.com Class 3 trailer hitch receiver. Maybe you don't have a factory hitch and you're looking for a hitch to put on. This is going to be a great option. Maybe you have a factory hitch and it's just wore out and you're looking to replace it. Again, e-trailer hitch is going to be a great option. You can see our cross tube is a little bit visible, but the round tube design, it is going to maintain a nice clean look on the back of the vehicle. The round tube is going to fit with the contours of the vehicle. Class 3 hitch, 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. Reinforced collar, give us a little extra stability there. Hitch pin hole is going to be 5 8 inch in diameter. It's going to take a standard 5 8 hitch pin. Hitch pin and clip does not come with this hitch, however, it can be found here at eTrailer.com. We're going to have play style safety chain loops. You can see we're going to have very large openings. It's going to give us plenty of room to accommodate different size safety chain hooks. This hitch is going to be a steel construction with a triple carbide black powder coat finish. Really going to hold up well against chipping, rust, and corrosion. Stay looking nice for a really long time. Our receiver tube is actually going to extend out past the edge of our bumper about an inch. That's nothing to worry about. You're not going to have to worry about bumping your legs or your shins on it. Now I'm going to give you a few measurements to help you when deciding on any of your hitch mount accessories you may need, such as bike racks, ball mounts, and cargo carriers. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost part of our bumper is going to be about two inches. That number is important for any of your hitch mount accessories that may fold up against your vehicle. You want to make sure they're not going to make contact. From the ground to the top innermost part of our receiver tube, is going to be about 15 and a half inches. Keep that number in mind for any of your hitch mount accessories that may require a little bit more ground clearance. As far as our weight capacities go, we're going to have a 600 pound max ton weight, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube. We're going to have a 6,000 pound gross trailer weight, which is a trailer plus the load included, and that's how much the hitch can pull. So you want to make sure anything you're loading, you're not exceeding that downward pressure, and you're not putting more weight onto the hitch than's needed. You can use weight distribution with this hitch, Tongue weight's going to go up to 1,000 pounds, trailer weight's going to go up to 10,000 pounds. Always recommend checking the owner's manual of the vehicle. Make sure the vehicle can withstand that amount of weight. You're going to go with the lowest number between the vehicle and the hitch. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let me walk you through how to get it installed. Now to begin our installation, I went ahead and lowered the spare tire for video purposes to make it a little bit easier for you to see. We're going to have two weld nuts right on the bottom of our bumper that are exposed to the elements that we're going to need to clean out. Make sure you clean them out because we don't want the bolts we're putting in to cross thread and strip out. So you can use a tap to clean them out. If you don't have a tap, uh, what I like doing is taking a bolt that's the same size, same threads, and then you're going to take a metal cutting blade on a rotary tool and you're just going to cut grooves in it. I usually do about three and that'll act as your tap. And what you want is you want to be able to get your bolt to hand thread into place. On each side, this bolt is holding or is holding this bumper bracket on. You can see the top of it is open to the elements also. You want to make sure you clean those threads off when you remove it. You need to remove this one and you're going to have one on the other side to remove. We'll use a 22 millimeter socket. On each frame rail, we're going to be using this hole and our factory uh, weld nut. For this one, spacer block, carriage bolt, drop down into place like that. We're going to do that same thing on the other side of the vehicle. Now the next set of hands will raise our hitch into position. We're going to take our larger hex bolt, conical tooth washer, and make sure the teeth are facing towards the hitch. We'll get one in on each side, hold our hitch into place while we install our remaining hardware. We're going to take a second M14 bolt, conical tooth washer. We're going to put it each one of these holes up into the wall base. Then we're going to take our flange nut and put it on the bolts that we dropped down through the frame rail. Next, we'll take a 19 millimeter socket and a 22 millimeter socket. We're going to tighten and torque all of our hardware to the specifications and the instructions. Once you have all your hardware tightened and torqued to the specification and instructions, you're ready to go. Again, I'm Shane with eTorio.com. I hope this video has helped you whether you're still deciding or installing the eTorio.com Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on your 1999 Chevrolet Silverado.